Hi everyone and welcome to the first in a series of tutorials where I will be showing you how to make doors in Unreal Engine 4 using a blueprint system. Uh, this is aimed to be a beginner uh, tutorial so don't worry if you've never touched uh, Unreal 4 before. I'll try and explain everything as I go along as clearly as possible. So to show you what we we're doing in this episode I'll click play and we're going to make a proximity door so a door that opens as soon as you get close to it and then closes when you get through the other side and again go through okay so that's what we're going to do in today so that what you just saw there is what we call an actor now to make a new actor in our world you go to your content browser down the bottom here and click on add new blueprint class and choose actor from the list of parent classes available you now give an option to name it so I'm going to name mine door underscore proximity okay and then once you've got that done double click and it will open up the actor editor window so this is the actor editor window to give you a quick tour uh, on the left here you've got a components panel uh, um, and a blueprint details panel and over on the right you've got the details panel and in the middle you've got the viewport, constructor script and event graph so the components are quite important so we, that's what we're looking at first of all components are the individual parts of each actor so an actor is made up of multiple components and those components could be uh, models like meshes uh, physical collisions um, movements, lights, cameras, all sorts of things, okay, all sorts of things are available to you. So currently, this is a blank actor, and it has only one component, that's the default scene route, that's this orb thing in the middle here, and that's the 000 location of the actor, so that's where it uses like a reference point, basically. So, um, the very first thing we need to do for our door is make a door mesh appear. So, we're going to add a component, so click on add component and in the search box type in static mesh and you'll see it come up and it'll ask you to name it if you want to name it I recommend you do so I'm going to call mine door mesh it's always a good idea to name your components and actors uh, as you go along because uh, things can get quite complicated so if you name them as you go along you don't get confused later on so as you can see, if I click on different components, the details panels on the right will change based on what I've got selected. Okay. And if I choose a door mesh, you'll notice there's nothing currently showing in the viewport, nothing new anyway. That's because we haven't given it what mesh we want to show. So in the details panel, you'll see an area saying static mesh, and it says currently none. If you click on the drop down box, it will show you all the meshes available to you. Now, I've already imported my door mesh, but uh, you can import your own, use anything you like. You can also download my mesh if you wish uh, from the description below the video. So you just search for your mesh you're going to use. So mine's door. And there it is. And there it appears. Okay. So I can move my door around. I can rotate it with E. I can scale it with R. But... Right now, I'm going to keep it 0, 0, 0 on the scene route as is, okay? And that's the mesh. Uh, this mesh uh, comes with its own collisions, so automatically the player won't be able to walk through it, which is good, because you don't want the player walking through your doors. It kind of defeats the purpose of it, really. Um, so that handles that part of it anyway. So the next component we need to add is our trigger. So... The way it works is your door will have a force field on either side of it determining whether or not the player has entered, well, is near the door or has walked away from the door, okay? So that's what we've got to add now. So again, go to add components. This time we're searching for box collision and there it is. And I'm going to leave mine called box. And you'll see the little box cube appear in your viewport. You want to scale and move this into position. So scale, move it up like so, and then scale it so it pokes out the front and the back. And it's about the same width as a door, and roughly the same height. Maybe not that high. There you go. There we go. That'll do. 
Um, so this is our force field. So if you want to increase the size of it, it means it triggers an, uh, a lot earlier. If you want to make it trigger later, then you just make it smaller. Also, uh, more uh, useful than you may think, if you want to make it a one-way door only, so the player only walks through it and then can't get back through it again, the easiest way of doing it is just moving the trigger so it's only on one side of the door. If it's not on the other side, it can't open, which is a good way of doing it. So that's an easy way of doing a one-way door. But for today, we're just going to do a simple two-way door. Okay. So with that done, uh, we need to do a couple of things. So first of all, the main issue we have with this is when the door opens, if I click on the door mesh and move it, notice the trigger moves with it. That's not what we want. Because if the imagine, well, imagine if the player has walked up to the door and they're now standing here. Okay. So they're standing there in front of the door. Because they're in the trigger, the door will open. But because they're now outside the trigger, they're still standing still, the door will now close. So what will happen is, with the player standing still, the door will do this sort of motion. Which is no good, you don't want that. That's bad. So we need to separate these two from being joined up. Now if you go to components list in the left here, you'll see box underneath door mesh is indented in and is collapsible under door mesh. That means that box is a child of door mesh, which we don't want. We want to make box a sibling of door mesh. And the way you do that is you click and drag box on top of default scene root and click attach. And now you notice these two are siblings. They are the same, they're separated, they're not parented or children of each other. Meaning I can now click on the door and move it separate from the trigger, which is perfect. That's what we want. The last thing we need to do is we need to edit the box trigger to be an actual trigger. Currently, what will happen is uh, you can walk through it as a player, but uh, objects such as like ammo and uh, bullets and things like that will just fly and bounce right off of this invisible force field. So we need to change its collision settings uh, slightly. So with the box selected in the components list, in the details panel, scroll down until you find the collision section. And in the section, you'll find collision presets. In the drop down, you'll see a list of options. You want to choose trigger. And that will solve that problem. When you're done, click compile button up here in the top left. And then click on the event graph tab. So, with our actor set up, we can now begin coding it. Now, with a bl blank blueprint, they will default give you three nodes. These little ghost nodes. We don't need these ones, so we can highlight them and delete them with the delete key. So, now it is truly blank. <clears throat> so... To add new nodes, as it says here, you right click and you get a menu of the hundreds, maybe thousands of nodes available to you. And you've got a search box here to make your life a little bit easier. But what's also quite nice is if you right click, you'll see here it says context sensitive. You want to leave that ticked on, okay, because that makes this a little bit easier. Because now if I were to click on the box component in the components list and then right click again, you'll see we now have add event for box, call function on box. And it's here which makes it a lot easier because we want to be able to make an event referencing that trigger. So in here, you want to type in begin overlap. And you'll see on add event for box collision, add on component begin overlap. Choose this and you get a red node appear. And it'll, you know if, if it's right because it should say box or whatever you've named your component here in brackets. Now this is a node and, and red nodes are what we call event nodes. Nodes uh, have a couple of features. So uh, they have an executable which is indicated by this little arrow here. So this is an out execute. So this will come out and execute the next node. And here you have some outputs. So this is a load of data that this node in particular can spit out. There are some nodes that have inputs which are on the left um, and you'll see those later. So an event node which are red are nodes which kickstart the whole entire coding process. So these are if you want to imagine are like batteries so these things will power on 
the whole circuit and your lines here are your circuitry so if you want to drag out your executable the white line the power line drag this out and now you'll get an option to add another node you want to type in the word cast to first person character now i'm using the first person character uh, first person template uh, example um if you've got a uh, your own project or using a third person character or whatever it may be um, this is simply just the player character so whatever the player character actor is okay now cast 2 takes in one input and has several outputs here so the input is an object and the object you want to pass through it is the other actor node uh, pin these are called pins by the way so the other actor is the reference to the actor that has overlapped the trigger now this is important because we only want the player to activate the door we don't want bullets or debris or enemies opening the door we just want the player to open the door so that's what a cast 2 does so cast 2 takes in this actor here and goes is it a first person character if it is it'll come out here as a success if it isn't it'll fail and come out here and it'll pass through the reference so you can use it later on the specific reference so with the cast to first person character in there we want to drag out of the executable line and we want to type in add timeline so now we're going to add in our code i'm going to name my timeline uh, door animation and what a timeline is um, is quite simply it is a way of changing a value over time excuse me um, if you double click on it you'll now get a new tab appear in your central window and this is the timeline editor so as I said a timeline can change a value over time and it can change floats vectors events and uh, colors I want to change a vector now a vector is simply a uh, a, th a three floating point coordinate so xyz for example so a positioning or movement it's uh, just a location basically so I'm going to name my track um, door sliding okay and this is a graph editor so if you've used graph editors before this should be quite familiar uh, if not don't worry it's quite simple to get grips with um, oh, get name hang on door sliding there we go. So here you have X, Y, Z, and you can hide the various axes on the on the chart. You can also lock them as well, so you can't edit them by accident. So the one you want to edit will be the Y axis. So you want to hide X and lock it, show Y and leave it unlocked, and Z you want to make sure it's hidden and locked. Okay, so you're only changing the Y uh, line. Now I know it's the Y line because if I go to the viewport and click on the door and if I look at these arrows, the movement arrows, I can see which direction I want it to move. So if I want it to move to the right or left, like so, it's green. And the green arrow refers to the Y axis. If it's up, it's the Z. If it's back it's, or forwards, it's the X. Okay. So I'm using the Y. So I go back to my timeline and you hold down Shift and click on roughly where zero is on your, on your timeline okay and this will add a keyframe and here you can edit the actual values more uh, accurately so i'm going to type in here zero zero so it, it's nothing's going to move from the get-go it's going to go back to zero zero and not change anything at all the next one i want to add is at the one second mark so look at one second on the line and roughly hit shift and click to add my next pin my next keyframe and again I'm going to be a bit more accurate with my figures by typing in one here and the value to be 300 okay and you'll notice the line shoots off because uh, the zoom is weird okay to fix that you've got these buttons here if you click them both it will nicely show the line more clearly for you okay and that's it so this this uh, is a visual representation of how the value changes over time okay so over the course of one second so the last thing we need to do here is change its length here to one second currently it's on five type in one enter and now it's one second long
done. Now if you hit compile and go back to your event graph, you'll notice that door sliding, that new track you made here, is now here as an output. So on the update, you want to drag out the update uh, pin and you want to type in set relative location and you want to choose the door mesh. So re set relative location for door mesh. And you'll notice that door mesh is automatically referenced and linked to your target. And what this function does, so this is a node which is called a function. You can tell because it's got an F on it. And this function uh, takes a load of values and spits them back out. But essentially what it does, this one in particular, is changes the location of this mesh relative to where it currently is in the world. So it'll add basically these values to its current location. Okay. And the values you want to add is, hey, look, that this is a same color as this one. They're both vectors. So you can link these up and you get the tick to show that you can. And that's it. So if I could compile and close this now and put my actor in the world by clicking and dragging it onto my level and click play. If I was to walk into it, the door will move. Now if I walk out of it though, it doesn't close. So we now need to add the closing piece, okay? Which is very, very quick and simple to do. So you want to return to your actor by double click on, on your door actor. And you'll notice on the timeline, it has this reverse input, okay? So we need to put in something here to tell it when to reverse. So if I'm going to open a door with a begin overlap, to do the opposite, to close the door, you want to do the opposite again. So you want to do an end overlap for the box. So click on box in the component list, right click and do end overlap. And you click on add on component end overlap. From there, drag out and type in cast to first person character. And hook it up with the other actor to the object. Make sure you do that. Um, it's quite a common mistake people forget to do. And from there, you simply drag the cast success up to reverse. And that is it. That's all you have to do. And to see this in action, I'm going to compile and close, click play. Now if I walk into it, it'll open them. And when I close, walk away, it'll close. Open, close. And that's it. It's that simple. If you have any questions uh, or you get stuck, please uh, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer any issues people are having. Uh, this is the first episode. In the second episode, I'm going to evolve that a little bit more and we're going to add uh, an interaction to it. So you walk up to the door and you have to hit a keyboard key such as E to open it up. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at. Uh, that's what we're looking at uh, next episode. If you like this, please uh, like and share and leave a comment, subscribe and uh, see you next time. Thank you.